Hey guys, Matt at Iron Trap Garage. Uh, today we're going to do a little side project. So you guys have asked, we've had a lot of questions in the past of uh, this little roadster that's been sitting on my chassis table for way too long, which is totally my fault. Um, we had this, uh, this body's actually a guy named Aaron that uh, lives north of me that uh, dropped this off to do some uh, rust repair uh, when we first brought, when he first kind of, he and I went back and forth, he finally sort of talked me into uh, doing the rust repair. Uh, it seemed like we were just going to have to do patch panels in the bottom of uh, like six inches, which is common on these cars. Um, and when we started digging in, the car had a lot of old, very poor repairs. And like a lot of these projects, they get out of control. And I've shelved it here and there with everything I have going on. But uh, I'm trying to get back on this car and work on it a little more. Uh, some people have asked about some more generic videos on some of this stuff. Like well, on the Sweetheart Roadster, I'm doing a lot of like super custom work where I'm making panels from totally from scratch, restyling stuff, all of that, which is, um, which is really fun. But if you're just trying to do a just basic uh, restoration or bring a car back, especially a Model A back, uh, you can buy patch panels, you can put them back together um, yourself. And it's not super duper difficult, but it does take some brute force in some places. So uh, what I've already done on this car, I've actually done a lot of work in the background over the past like probably been two years, sorry Aaron, um, is that uh, I've done the cow panels uh, sides on both sides. We've put another firewall in, we put firewall feet on one side, inner braces we've done in here. And a lot of this is just like old botched work that when we started cutting into somebody else's work, we had to make it larger. Um, I've done rear, uh, the wheel wells, but there's still some little sections that were botched that were bigger than the patch panels I need to make. Did a bunch of stuff. Now what we're on to uh, is doing the doors on this. And this is what actually kind of made me decide I should probably film this because this is a, a good example of what you guys may come across when you buy a project car. So uh, Aaron bought this car. It's actually really, overall is really solid. It's more solid than Sweetheart Roadster is to be honest, but it is not perfect, and while the, the Sweetheart Roadster was rusty and kind of broken in half, this car has uh, some repairs and, and ways that it was handled that actually caused a little bit of problems, even though it is cleaner rust-wise. So uh, one big thing with this car is over the years, it's been, um, it's been handled or moved without any proper, without proper bracing, I should say. There was a crossbar that was put in from here to here that sort of helped a little bit when Aaron was moving it around, but I think the car's been moved a bunch either without doors or without a proper bracing. So when I went to actually put the doors on, uh, the body was like, the doors didn't fit the body like at all. And even though we have it bolted down to a chassis, it was nowhere close. Um, so we actually had to take some ratchet straps from the front of the cow, from the A-pillar, all the way back to some braces in the back, ratchet it, that brought the ass end of the car back up, got the door jam sort of aligned, but our door is just like way far off. Um, we decided the lower patches that are on this car that somebody tried to put on are really bad and the door's uh, in pretty, pretty bad shape. Not only does it not fit, so I told Aaron I think the best bet with this just because of trying to fix all the previous repairs I've done to it is to get another skin. So, he went to Max and ordered uh, a set of full door skins for a 3031 Roadster. Uh, they look pretty good. They're, um, they're definitely sufficient for this car. Um, while they aren't perfect, they're a lot better than what he has and it'll work out pretty nice. The reason I wanted to do the full door skins on this was because everything's so out of whack on this. What I'm gonna actually do is cut the door skin off and we're gonna work on the inner structure first and try and get it to fit the car and do any repairs. Then we're gonna skin it and make the skin actually fit the car so that all the body lines will line up. Uh, it's a lot of work. I'm gonna show you guys some of the process along the way. Uh, I thought this is a, a good little project to show you guys and that's my long drawn out intro and we're gonna get to work. All right, so the driver's door here, um, got a little surface rust. This is my patch panel I made where I uh, fit up and welded in. Uh, it's tigged in, I hammered and dollied a little bit, didn't go too crazy, but um, what you're seeing is, look how far off the body line is between the patch that I put in that kind of matches the original and the lower skin that somebody was putting on patch, body line isn't even remotely close. Um, and then you look over here, some of the work that somebody else did. This was not Aaron, this was somebody else that maybe he got it from, but look how the door fits. So the door, we threw a latch on here and 
The door is like almost latched there. There we go. So forcing it into the latch, you can see the door is just like not even remotely fitting. The body lines are pretty poor. And also we're hitting up here, everything's kind of a mess. So um, we're gonna really, that's why you need to take it back to, uh, to step one and get the door inner structure to fit first. And then we can work on getting that skin to fit. Um, and that's just gonna make our life easier. But we definitely, I know Model A's aren't the best fit and finish, but man, that is not okay. Um, the other side's a little bit better, but also same kind of deal. It doesn't fit very good. And uh, even though the door's kind of latched, look at the gap that we got in there. So I may have to build some of that up, I'm not sure. Aaron isn't looking for a 100% show car finish on this, but I also don't want something that he's gonna be embarrassed to drive in the end. So I'm gonna uh, try and get the, uh, inner, or the uh, inner structure separated from the skin here and then we can start moving. All right, so I got the, uh, got the door a little tightened up. I uh, tightened up some of the screws that were in here and uh, this particular door on this car, and again, no fault against anyone, but this car has been moved around and passed through a bunch of owners. So it had just like little bolts, basically, I know they're here. Just little bolts stuffed through for, for door hinge pins, which are, uh, were very loose. So when you're moving the door around it, there was a bunch of play in the hinges. The screws weren't exactly tight and that wasn't helping things. But the big thing when you're trying to set these cars up is the door hinge pins. A lot of times on these cars being like almost a year, almost or 100 years old with a lot of these early Fords, Model T's, Model A's, even into the, you know, the mid 30s, um, you'll find this where the hinge pins are worn out or have been replaced with not a tight fitting uh, hinge pin and the door will have all kinds of sag in it. So while we're trying to get all the gaps and stuff like workable on this car and get the door shut, uh, I just went ahead and just really quickly uh, on the lathe made up some pins that fit a little tighter that I had to actually like hammer them in. Uh, they're not loosey goosey, uh, but they're good for temporary because right now, uh, everything's closed up, so we can't really get parts as easy, and I wanna keep moving on this. So, what I'm gonna do is get the door skin off now. Uh, I started tweaking on the inner door structure a little bit and the hinges to try and muscle it to get it so it latches decent, but uh, the door skin is fighting us a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is take the uh, flap disc here, and we're gonna work along the edge. This door has been repaired many times um, along the way. So I'm gonna sand along the edge to knock off, uh, to, to break through the, the pinch weld here, or the, the hemmed over edge, and then we'll get the skin off, and then we can start trying to tweak the structure to get the door to actually swing and latch somewhat reasonably good uh, for what we're going with this car. So start doing some grinding. That's what you'll see as you start grinding. You know when you went enough, when you just see the line just show up, you can almost stop right there because usually you're basically through. If you touch it just a hair more, you'll knock it through. But you don't want to go too crazy that we start grinding away the inner structure because uh, that'll cause a problem when we're fitting the new skin. Since this skin is seen better days, I wasn't worried about saving this top edge here. So as you can see we got some bullet holes, great. And uh, you can see it's all surface rusted in here. So another good reason to take the skin all the way off on this car um, was to 
get to all this so that we can at least throw some rusty caps later on to seal it up. You could spray it inside with a with one of those uh, long nozzles the Eastwood has, but um, I thought it'd be good to get in here. So now I'm going to try to get the door to rest a little bit, see if I can get it to fit and get it to latch. We may have to like tweak the hinges, play with how tight the body's bolted down, both in the front and in the middle of the car, and we will see. All right, so I loosened the top screws in the hinge and I wanted to show you guys. Uh, I thought this would be pretty helpful because it's just stuff that um, I don't cover a lot of times when you guys have been asking. So try and show the stuff in more in depth. So you can see the door uh, inner structure is sitting low. Like if I let it sag, it's low. And I have the bolts out so it's, it's making it look worse than it is. But basically, if you watch that gap, See that gap that's open up between the body and the front of the hinge there, back in the in the slot and the bot and the cowl. That's the problem. There's too much gap between there. I'm not sure what happened caused that, but there should be some kind of spacer or something behind there to get the door to basically come forward here, which we'll have to address that gap later. But um, what we're trying to do is get the door latched. So if we put a spacer in between there, in between the front of the of the hinge and in between the body there that should push it back which will then get me lined up right about here and then I could see in again with this skin off it really makes it nice because now I could see all my latch stuff you can see right there we're kept we're gotten into the catch I didn't loosen that yet to get it to latch a little nicer but that's all it is so I just got to get I think I gotta get a spacer in there. So I'm gonna find just two washers real quick to shove in there, and hopefully that'll push it back and it'll get it swinging uh, so that it'll latch without me having to pull up on the door. So, got my door tweaked. Uh, what I ended up doing is, uh, actually I did a bunch of stuff. So, I uh, saw that I loosened the screws for the latch and I got those actually, uh, the door latch or catch, as far out as it could go. But the problem that we were running into is that the inside of the door uh, latch itself was hitting on the stopper and it still wasn't quite latching. So, what I found is actually in the door jam, use my little, my door handle right now. Um, in the door jam here, from years of slamming this door shut, uh, the door opening right in here was tweaked a little bit. So what I did is I just took the latch off, took it a, a big adjustable wrench here, and uh, just bent on the door jam right where the latch mounts, just a little bit, just, just to tweak it so the catch was allowing it to go past. Lubricated everything, uh, pushed my latch, or my catch back where it needed to be, and now it latches pretty darn good. So um, it's not perfect uh, without really going crazy and redoing some of the jams and stuff on this car, which we're not going that crazy. Uh, it's pretty good. Before, this door was sagging super bad. Um, it still has a little bit of sag in it, but I think it's twisted a little bit. Down at the bottom's rotted, so I don't want to tweak too much because we still have to rebuild all that inner, that bottom inner, uh, inner part of the door so but right now big thing is it's pretty much latching with very little effort it latches just fine so that is great um, that is a big step and I probably have a couple hours of work into doing what you guys just saw so uh, kind of crazy so I'm gonna work on getting the bottom tweaked a little bit and then work on uh, probably making up some pieces for the bottom that's really rotted and then we can go from there but um, or at least, or at least getting somewhere, which is good. So 
we'll work on that a little bit and see where we can get. All right, so I got the uh, inner door structure off the car now that we got a latching and it's kind of tweaked in a manner in which it will fit the car pretty good. You can see what we're, we're dealing with here on the bottom. It's all rotten on this bottom edge here, Swiss cheese. But luckily, it's just the bottom. As soon as we get around the corner here, it's not too bad. Go over this side, same thing. Once it gets up into there, not too bad. So I think what we're going to try and do, and this, is, this may change as I start digging into it, is try and weld right on this edge here, if I could save it. So that way I can just have a straight piece that goes up and down. This is like a, tr I think this is for holding like a seal or a trim. So we're gonna, I'm gonna probably, I'm not gonna replicate that. That's something we should be able to probably get. But, um, so we need to make a piece that goes straight up and down and then break it 90, but leave, leave enough width in here that we can uh, leave that corner. Now I may need to do something a little different with that. I'm not sure yet, but, um, I need to leave enough that it goes down to do that corner. So I'm hoping I can just use a shrink or stretcher and, and work these corners to get it to wrap around on both sides. And then it's just a flat flap. If I cut really carefully at the edge of this bead, I hopefully can weld right on the leading edge here of this bead and then grind it smooth and it'll look pretty good without having to like recreate the whole bottom of the inner door structure. That's the goal. Uh, I'm going to make a pattern here and then we're going to try and bend it up and see if we can uh, replicate it. So I got the piece uh, just real quickly in the shrinker or stretcher, uh, stretched it out, and you see what actually happened. Um, this is something that I used to get really scared about, but now you just kind of know it's going to happen. We had to make a really tight 90 degree corner here, and unfortunately, the metal, uh, there wasn't enough metal to, and it stretched really thin, and it basically tore. So, not a big deal um, because, and you can see it tore about the same spot here. I got it fitting pretty good. Um, Basically what I'm gonna plan on doing is just welding up those little tears. Uh, it's easier than trying to like make this whole corner and weld it in. So there I can just do two little slivers, weld them up, especially with a TIG rod, you can just like, you can lay the TIG rod in there and actually fill them up and it'll blend it all in and you'll never see it, especially on an inner structure like this, it's not a problem. Um, but you guys can see what happened. Uh, I knew they were gonna tear, it's just a matter of where and I just kept following it till it did it. So see it's fitting pretty good. I just got to like put a clamp on here to actually get it to to draw it in But it's it's really darn close fits good all in here across the bottom and then right here um, You can see same thing just got to pull it into the corner. It's just kind of sitting there, but um, overall it's pretty good I got my center line Matching in there, so everything fits pretty good. We got plenty of extra material. It actually is too long here, which I knew um, and we're gonna trim that down, but in the corners, it looks like we're about where we need to be. I'll just square the corners off right here and here when we get uh, further along and get it all welded in. That'll kind of be the final process. And worst case scenario, if I have to, I can add a little sliver on there. Um, but I, I just wanted to get the major part made there. So I'm gonna keep trimming this down, get those little corners welded up, and then we can uh, cut the old metal out and we'll be ready to go.
right, so I got the whole seam welded up. It was quite a bit of welding and the uh, problem like I always run into is we were dealing with paper thin original metal where it was a little pitted and uh, just uh, had to be really careful. So I wanted to show you guys what it looks like before I start sanding the weld. Uh, this looks a little different than when you are doing uh, like a nice you know, suspension part or something like that. I'm more focused on getting the metal fused together and getting like 100% penetration versus doing like perfect stack of dimes. Uh, this is more like gas welding or soldering where you're just trying to flow the filler rod into the corner and, uh, and fill everything up and get a nice fully penetrated seam so that we can sand everything down. So that's what my, uh, my seam looks like. Not like beautiful, but it's fully penetrated and I was really fighting this. So you guys might have seen, I was kind of working my, um, my torch hand up and down, like weaving it around. And what I was doing is just dancing around from the good metal to the crappy metal and trying to just flow the filler rod right into that seam and just really watching what was going on. So that's the side here that you're actually going to see. I'll flip this over here so you guys can see the uh, back around on, on here. And uh, I know it's probably hard to see. So, there we go. So the key is here, you can see I'm getting full penetration through the back side. So when we sand this, we know everything's glued together really, really nice. So that was what I was worried about. You're, it's, it's kind of scary because you want to be to the point where you're basically like almost burning through. Uh, is like the happy zone between just about to burn through. And like I said, I was fighting some of this stuff where there's some little pinholes. Even right here, I could see some tiny little rust pinholes that were just above where I was welding um, on this project. I'm gonna probably just leave that alone. It's not gonna hurt anything and we can just, uh, we can rust proof, it, proof everything and it won't cause a, an issue. Um, but I didn't wanna cut too far into this because this is not a full blown crazy 100 point restoration project. So uh, now that I got this all welded on the, on the front side or the inside of the door, now I can go ahead and take my little trusty uh, two inch Eastwood uh, sander here that I keep. It's kind of like a die grinder, but um, it's like a dedicated sander that is just tough as, tough as crap. I throw this thing around and beat it up as you guys can see and it works awesome. So I'm gonna use this to go over and just dance around on the weld seam and just create that corner. Not trying not to take too much off um, and I can blend that around and that will make the seam disappear and then I'll work on these corners. So I already did some hammering and dollying had to re-weld the one corner up that ended up splitting as I was kind of heating and hammering this corner into place. So a little more finish work, and then we could trim this edge down to the, I think it was a 7 8 uh, flange, so I can trim that down, and then we should be ready to start fitting it up and uh, checking what our skin is. So I'm gonna just do a little bit of sanding, and I'll show you guys how it looks afterwards. All right, so I took the little mini sander there and went over everything, knocked down the welds, knocked everything flat on the bottom, and then I came back with 80 grit on a DA and just kind of rounded all the corners. Again, made sure everything was flat. I trimmed the excess off the bottom and everything's looking pretty good. I ended up just rounding the corners uh, rather than welding them square for now. I'm gonna see when we put the door skin on. I think it'll totally be fine. Um, if I decide that it bothers me that the corners aren't square when we wrap everything around, I could certainly add a little section to make those corners square. Uh, but for now, all I wanted to do is just cut off all the jagged uh, stuff and blend it all in so the flange looks nice and flows so we could start fitting the door skin up. So uh, now that I got the uh, inner structure all good, I'm gonna put it back on the car, uh, do some more twisting and adjusting to get it to latch again correctly because I'm sure just from welding on the bottom, it, it's kind of moved around a little bit as things do with heat. Uh, once I get that back together and latching, I'll do that in between uh, this, this video and the next one. 
Next video, what we're gonna work on doing is just getting the skin hung. I'm gonna show you guys how uh, these aftermarket door skins and these cars that are this old, pretty much all the time, uh, you're gonna find that you're going to need to cheat something, whether the door skin needs to be moved just a little bit, or you need to pie cut something, because these cars, since they're nearing 100 years old, and are also, um, you're dealing with aftermarket parts, uh, a lot of times you have to modify the stuff, and that's why in this particular instance, it was easier for me to just make a little piece for the bottom, weld it up, fit it in, because uh, it saved a couple bucks for Aaron to own the car, and also saved me some hassle of having to modify it anyways. So hopefully you guys found this video helpful. Uh, this is some of the stuff that I used to skip over and not show in videos and did kind of in the background behind the scenes. And uh, I know you guys have been asking for a lot more of this type of content, so that's why I'm shooting these videos. If you enjoy this video and some of these side little um, fab projects, little side projects we have going on, definitely drop us a comment down below. Let me know that you do like this stuff so we can continue to do these types of videos. Thanks guys for watching. Catch you later.